Hey everyone, in this video we're going to practice how to make swirl meshes in Houdini. So as you can see here, I've got this effect and there is a two swirls. The one is actually going around the mask object and the other swirl is uh, on the floor creating this wind or dust effect going outwards from the object. So the bottom one you can probably create like a torus or just a flat circle. However, I think that the uh, irregular swirl object gives a, a little bit better look. So let me isolate those two. The one on the floor is actually flat and the other one is actually going upwards. Okay, so let me show you the texture I'm using for those two as well. Just that one, just tweaking the color a little bit adding intensity as well and a different noise distortion settings. I covered this texture in the previous video if you want to see, but in this one we're just going to dive in Houdini and we're going to create two simple swirl meshes for our effects. Now we are in Houdini, the first swirl will be for our ground effect. We could do, you could even add additional vertex paint at the ends to minimize any texture clipping. But a little bit, it's not completely flat, it goes upwards a little bit on, the, on an angle. Okay, and the second one well, which actually has the vertex paint at the end and it also is done through the spiral. Okay, so let's start the first one, which we're going to use a line tool for. I'm going to start by creating a geometry node. I'm going to call this one ground swirl tutorial. I'm going to dive inside space, space and F to zoom in. And in here, I'm just going to create a line. For the origin of the line, let's maybe go a minus one. Also, I want to change direction of it. Here, I'm going to increase the length to two. So it goes basically both ways. And what I'm going to do as well with the points, I need more points, so I'm going to have 20. You can use the resample node as well. After, if you want more points, I'm just going to use the points that are available to me in the line tool. Next, I'm just going to go for sweep. In here, I'm going to select the ribbon. The columns, I actually need only, let's go maybe with four. Else we might need uh, go to rotation and see if we can maybe apply some roll to it. That should lift our plane or that circle a little bit. However, let's just keep it to zero for now and we're gonna come back to it later on. Let's see what else do we have here in that tool. You can also scale it along the curve if that's what we want. So you can create a little taper at the ends. I'm just going to keep it hold for now. Okay, next I'm going to actually apply the vertex color now. So I'm going to go for gradient tool, enable it. You need labs, side effects labs enabled. So go to here, plus button shelf and enable it. Here, if you don't have it, then once that tab is going to appear, you can download the tool set using this button. Okay. So now once we have this, we can change the direction. Take uh, the axis, the wide bit to the middle. 
then I'm gonna create another pin at the end, which I'm gonna be black. Now we have this uh, vertex color on the sides. And if you want additional vertex color at the ends, you can just go for another gradient like this. X this time. Same thing. So basically, go to 0.5, create a white color here, and at the end, you can go for the black one. Ideally, you probably want to bring this white color just to the end. So, for example, 0 0.2 or even 0 0.15 and then another white at the end. 0.85 as well. So, on the ends of that plane, you're going to have the vertex color on. And now, you can just go to the top and operation set it to multiply and that way you're gonna get two gradients you've just created if you don't need that if you don't need this one you can just skip that node and you're gonna end up with the size only it depends what you need this for now I'm gonna go for UV transform if I want to create some basic UVs I think under sweep you can enable compute UVs here so you're gonna get some basic UVs under UV transform, I think our UV is going to look stretched, as you can see here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to type here, slash dollar sign, size X. Copy this, paste it to the Y axis. Oops. Type it, size Y. it's actually going to shrink our UVs to the 0 to 1 space. Okay, so once we have our UVs, and we can create maybe some taper next. I'm going to change the capture direction. X true length we keep it at one by one at the form in both directions now for example you can just shrink your ends if that's what you need just additional control to give you in case you want to taper both of the ends I'm going to taper it to maybe 0 0.7. I'll keep it at 1 and come back to it if I actually need it. Next, I'm going to create bend. And in here, I'm just going to select both directions. For the up vector, I'm going to go for the uh, Z axis. And at the bottom, I need to change the direction. I mean, I have to experiment. Ideally, add some values first, so for example, 90. So if you're changing your up vector or direction, you can see the changes on your mesh okay and then here you can add 100 maybe 70 to almost full circle i'm gonna go with 140 or 120 i wanna all, almost a full circle with a small gap to create a little bit more random uh, and irregular shape maybe 140 next i'm just gonna align it to the grid I'm gonna enable grid now as you can see it's kind of offset it a little bit so I'm gonna go for axis align okay and let's go back to our sweep here play with the roll because we want to lift uh, some of the edges out outwards now if you play with the roll you can see you can lift part of the mesh uh, a little bit up that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with maybe values of, I think six might be a little bit too much. I think three might be uh, 3.5 maybe because we can scale it in the engine if we need it on one of the axes. Okay, so let's select our axis align. Next, let's try to scale it up a bit. 
So I'm gonna go for game scale, or oh, actually transform. I'm gonna call this one engine, engine scale. And before actually engine scale, I'm gonna apply some normals as well to it. So normal, 180, because I want this to be smooth. And for the game scale, I'm gonna go maybe with 50 scale. Or actually, I want this to match somewhere around maybe 75. You can go for 100. I think I'm just gonna go for 75. So I'm gonna keep going. I think I need a bit more points on that circle. So I'm gonna head to the line and increase the points maybe. Or maybe with 50 with smooth edges. Although you might not need smooth edges like that, so maybe 35 uh, should be enough. You can increase the roll to lift that part of the mesh if you uh, need it, but I'm just gonna keep it as it is and modify, modify my mesh inside of the Niagara later on. Okay, so that's the first mesh. And the next one we're gonna create, uh, we're gonna try to create a swirl around the, around the spiral tool in Houdini. Keep this one. Obviously, you got this uh, gradient as well if you want to have it on the edges. Just gonna disable it and go back, disable this one, and gonna create another geometry node. I call this one uh, Swirl Tutorial. Dive inside, space and F to zoom in. And in here, I want to start with a spiral. Press tab, start typing spiral. I'm gonna zoom in again because it's tiny. And in here, let's try some other settings. So I go for radius of one. Height, I actually want to set it to one as well so it's actually gonna be moving upwards along the mesh for the points i don't need 300 i think that's way too much it's something that you can modify later on so i'm gonna keep maybe 50. okay for the radius i actually wanna set it to one this axis as well because i don't want this to be shrinking towards the end okay next we're gonna use sweep again I'm gonna go for ribbons. And uh, values we're gonna put in. I think that's too much. I'm gonna go for three only. Because I need only those edges. Or actually only the ends will have a vertex color. I'm gonna compute UVs as well. In here I actually want those both of those ends to shrink. Grab that one, set it to value of zero, and that one as well. Oops. And I'm gonna select those pins and change, change it to Bezier curve. Add additional points. I want on the ends to get this uh, tapered. Okay, I'm gonna increase the width of it. I'm gonna set it to one. See if there is any pinching because we scaled it with the curve. It doesn't seem to be. Okay, what else we can tweak? Let's try a roll. I want to roll it, but just a little bit, just to flatten this out slightly. Minus 10 should be enough. Okay, next I'm going to apply a gradient. black values at the end as well. Zero, zero here and here. I'm just gonna create another pin with 
wide values and bring those towards the end. As you can see, we're kind of getting irregular results. Try different axes, but it doesn't seem like it's uh, working. I think in the, one of the previous videos, I actually used the expression to uh, get some nice gradient on the spiral. However, it, it, it doesn't work for everyone, as the people in the comment section have been mentioning. So this time, let's try to hack it instead. So I get rid of that one at the end. Enable uh, back one actually on one end, and what we do in basically creating only on this side. Okay, it doesn't work if you want a more uh, helix count, for example, because as you can see, it's not going to create on the ends but only on this side of the mesh, which is not what we want. I'm pretty sure there is a solution you can try to create it with the expression and I'm pretty sure it's gonna work however I'm just gonna go with uh, with this method because I only need spiral to go uh, by this amount to be completely honest with you I do prefer creating spirals uh, using the line method that we did before because then you can have full control over the gradients and you don't have to create any expressions uh, however because I wanted to show you the spiral kind of have to use uh, this hack without putting any expressions I'm pretty sure there is a way to do it without any expressions and someone hopefully in the comment section might come up with that however th uh, this time we just have to hack it next I'm gonna create UV transform As you can see they stretched so we have to do that trick again where we actually put uh, here slash dollar sign size x and in here the same with size y so dollar sign size y it's going to shrink our uvs i think you don't ha actually have to do this uv transform because they should be should be here to normalize computed UV. So for example, if I will get rid of that one, you can just tick that box under sweep and it's gonna do exactly the same thing. However, I just wanna uh, have a separate control, so I'm gonna do it in UV transform. Because sometimes you wanna have a custom UVs and because of that, I'm just gonna create this uh, UV transform. But again, it's just another trick that you can just this one tick box and it's gonna uh, do the job for you okay so let's go to the perspective view and I'm gonna use axis align bring this to the center like this when I exported this mesh to the Unreal Engine there was some problem with the uh, triangles so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna triangulate here uh, using divide and create those triangles for us automatically next i'm going to add some normals with 180 value here and at the end i'm just going to use another transform to get the game engine scale so let's go with 50 and again i'm just going to aim for the 75 radius okay so if you're going to put 50 it will be around 75 radius and I'm just gonna export this into the engine. Okay, so that's how I create spirals. Again, my preferred method is actually using the line. Do it that way. And you get just full control over the, your vertex paint colors. However, the spiral tool is uh, interesting as well. And I think there's a just expression how to do it. I think it's in my one of the previous videos about spirals as well. I mentioned that expression, so you probably have to go through it and uh, dig it out. Or maybe you know better method to create it on a spiral. So if you do, please 
mention it in the comment and I'm gonna use that in any future videos about spirals. But to be honest, if you've done previous tutorial about spiral on my channel, you probably know how to do it already. This is just for the practice. And maybe you're gonna learn something new from that tutorial as well. I hope you find it useful and uh, thank you so much for watching.